Hello and welcome everyone. It's me again and I wanted to share with you something that I found while playing around with Convolution Reverb. The inspiration for this video was I was watching a live stream by Mo Falk. He was doing a project file or something like that and that man uses Convolution Reverb like it is nobody's business. And it got me thinking about some early tutorial, earlier tutorials that I found um, about color-based design and all the different techniques used. Um, and I think it was Virtual Riot who mentioned that convolution reverb has the issue where when you try to use it to colorize a sound, you get a very muddy, low-fidelity output. Um, and I think I have a sort of kind of a solution. It, it's not perfect, but it, I, I think it makes it better. So I wanted to share that with you. But in order to do so... I have to explain how convolution works. I went to school for engineering and convolution is not a simple thing to understand. It is. It took me years to figure out how this works. So if you want a really good video that explains fairly simply um, how convolution works in depth, I highly recommend watching the video that I put in the description to a three blue, one brown video. He has so many great visualizations to help you understand how convolution is working in the background. But for all intents and purposes, convolution in this sense, we are taking one waveform and we're using all of its individual data points to create copies of another sample in different points in time. Let me show you what I mean. I have this little uh, eject it's ejection sound from um, from a pistol. Um, it sounds like this. And I have a whole bunch of con convolvers here to sort of demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So this first convolver is just an impulse. So that means that it has one sample in a 44,000 hertz sample rate. One of those samples is at maximum volume at time equals zero. If we play the sound through this convolver, what we expect is to hear an unchanged version of the original sound because there's only one copy of the sound playing. And that is exactly what we get. So let's take this voice copying concept a little bit further. I have a second convolver here. This convolver is two impulses one at the very beginning of time, and one delayed by like roughly a second. Plus or minus, you know, 10%, but whatever. <laughs> so what we expect is we expect one sample to play at time equals zero, so instantaneously, and then another copy of the sample to play after about a second. So if we play the sound, that's exactly what we get. Let me do it again, and I'll show you that I am pressing stop, and it is still playing the sound. The other part about convolution reverb is that the amplitude of which that voice is being played at is determined by its position on the waveform. These are positive amplitudes, which means that it's going to have a positive volume scaling. But what happens if we invert it and we have a negative port, we have a negative sound or a negative sample? Well, what you'll find on this third one is that's exactly what I'm doing here. It is a single impulse that is inverted. However, I can't just play this through the ejection sample because it'll sound the same. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do, what I have is this citrus. And this citrus plays on the same channel, but it's just a saw wave, which I will show you through this wave candy that I have here. So if you look, if I play E, you will see the saw wave on the oscilloscope. If I turn the convolver on, would you look at that? It inverts, the, it reverses the polarity of the signal. Off. Normal saw wave on reflection saw wave. They do sound slightly different from one another because of how it moves the speaker, but that's 
a conversation for a different day. So now let's put all of these together in order to explain how convolution reverb works. When we take a sound like this ejection sample here, and we run it through a, convol con a convolution or an impulse response, sorry, my brain is not working very well today. Um, let me just use that. The reason why convolution reverb works the way that it does is that you have all of these different sam all of these different data points and all of these data points are changing if i can <laughs> it's really hard to maneuver in this thing there we go this like right here oh my god this is so difficult okay here this is perfect okay what you'll see is you you have a whole bunch of data points with positive and with negative values and because these are happening in very for very short periods of time, it emulates a reverb because a reverb at the end of the day is just a bunch of copies of the sound, both incident, meaning forward, and reflected, meaning reversed. Because in reality, when you speak or when you hear a sound, the sound travels outward, bounces off the walls, and is reflected back to your ear. But the speed of sound is like, what is it, like 500 something miles per hour? <laughs> it's something stupid. Um, it's really quick. So when you speak, you're going to hear a bunch of reflections and incident waves happening on the walls at the same time, roughly the same time. So if we use these waveforms to create a whole bunch of those, uh, create a whole bunch of those um, voices in a very short period of time, you get essentially uh, especially if they are attenuating or they're you know reducing in amplitude over time, you get essentially a reverb. Now you can take this step a step further with this second um, convolver. If you take those two impulses and you bring them really really close together, right now we have a shorter delay. Let's move it again. We turn the second one off delay we get really really close oh my god that's for, that's for later really close together let's get let's get even let's get really tight in there now we have flanging because flanging happens when two voices are played close enough together that their phase difference creates uh cancellation in their frequencies so you can also use it to create flanges or delays or phasers you can make phasers with convolution you can you can make any kind of effect practically that you want using convolution besides like well i guess technically decoding anyway getting ahead of myself here so that's how convolution works in a nutshell so how do we use this for color based design or how do we how do we correct the issues with color based design to exemplify this i have here i move that out of the way i have this little yar pirate synth thing sounds like this uh, i'm going to turn it down actually loud and it's got something running into it doesn't it yeah it's got this um, move it back in here and make sure all this is off yeah off it's a it's just a citrus fm thing that i made as vocal movement when you use something like this sauce stack here which is just this oh my god if i can click the right things today that's all that, that is it's just a sauce stack not really a sauce stack it's just a, a minor chord the saw wave just that when you use that and use try to use that to colorize the sound you get this colorful but kind of muddy sounding thing if we remove all of the negative uh amplitudes in that waveform and do what, something i like to call uh rectify because it reminds me of what a diode does. Um, 
which is it's the same exact saw wave except all of the freak all not the frequencies all of the amplitudes are concentrated in the positive region so you get this it's the same they're the same sound but one is in the positive region and the other moves between the positive and the negative regions it sounds quieter because there's less area being covered by the waveform but again that's another topic for another day so if i run this signal the 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 bass sound through this we get something really really loud <laughs> let me turn that down back to its original value turn it up a bit you get this issue where it's you can hear more of the vocal movement, but we get a lot of low frequency content, which seems counterintuitive to how we solve this problem because now we have a whole bunch of low frequency content. And we've really muddied the sound up, but the low frequency content in this is concentrated due to the fact that this DC, this is a not DC because we're stuck in a positive region. What you have is you have one singular oscillation happening over a quarter of a second, which is like, what is that, like four hertz? So you have <laughs> so you have a very, very low frequency oscillation happening. How do you fix this? You just bring up an EQ and you just cut off the low end. And you get this. And now we can bump it up. Get up to six. Right? Now we compare it to the other one. Now you can hear the differences between the two. Here is the unrectified form. Here's the rectified form. It's a subtle difference between the two, but in my opinion, the rectified waveform has a much deeper fidelity of that vocal movement than the unrectified version of the waveform. Subtle difference. In most cases, it's not gonna make too big of a difference, but where things really get interesting is when you actually start playing around with the stretch mode. When you turn the stretch down all the way on the unrectified waveform, you get this. Which is still really cool, but... Yeah, you get... You start to lose a lot of that vocal movement. It's still there, but it's not nearly as clear. If we do the same thing, but on the rectified waveform, now it's really present. And that's where this technique really shines. When you actually start using the stretch modes, the self-convolve and the stereo, the signal, because it only has positive reflections and you merge them you're you're you get a more sort of clear merging of the two signals that you're bringing together because the negative portion creates those reflections which will phase cancel with the original signal and create that sort of muddiness and it reduces the fidelity of the original signal itself because they're they're inverse of one another if you've ever done you know like <laughs> back in the day uh ghetto um acapellas right one of the oldest techniques of getting an acapella or something is to find the instrumental and then take it align it with the original song and then invert the polarity of the two and you get roughly the acapella same thing is happening here that's why you lose a lot of that uh, fidelity in that song is because you're creating all of these inverse um, reflections of the original waveform. If you don't do that, you can maintain the integrity of the original signal in your sound design. That's how you use convolution to get a clearer and a much, I won't say like a much clearer, because <laughs> this is a very subtle effect at best. Um, but it's how you sort of maintain the integrity of your original signal, I'll say. All right, bonus features now. Hooray! If you want to create your own uh, rectified waveforms um, <clears throat> to use in your sound design, um, here's a couple tips to sort of help you maintain that. 
or how to create them, I should say. So um, the first thing is Citrus is really good with this because as you saw in the main portion, main body of the video, um, I created this, I had this saw wave that has this half, it has this half function, which is really, really useful um, for maintaining that DC. I won't say DC. It's technically DC'd up, but um, rectified. It actually has another one on here called Absolute, which is uh, also technically rectification. But it's how you may, that's how you can generate oscillators that have only a, a positive um, amplitude. You just have to be careful because you're going to hit your ceiling uh, because there's a maximum, um, there's like a maximum amplitude that can be um, generated by the oscillator, which comes from the fact that uh, most like, I think it's like mixers, the line voltage for your input or your outputs is like 1.5 volts or something like that. So there's a ceiling, right? If I push, if I push this, um, if I push this sound all the way up to the max, right? Um, where, where can I do this? It's gonna get really loud, so I'm, I really apologize. I'll turn this part of the video down so that way you can save your ears, but mine won't be so lucky. There we go. Now we got this fucking nonsense. But what you can see here is that I've hit the ceiling and um, it's just creating like static sounds, um, which is what happens when you, you know, you're hitting the ceiling is your, your, your voltage can't go any higher. So it can only pick up the truss and that's how you can make like clicks and stuff like that. Um, don't do this through your speakers, please. For the love of God. <laughs> um, it's not good for your voice coils to just pump this thing at maximum DC. Um, don't do it. <laughs> uh, save your speakers. So that's how you can use Citrus to create these, um, these waveforms. Um, you, like I was doing with the, the saw wave, um, you can create multiple oscillators and, um, you, each of them can be in this positive region here, like this. And I'm gonna put this one down to like, you know, half, and I'm gonna raise off. Oh, that's fine. I'll turn this to one and I'll turn this to two. Yeah, that's fine. And I run through the same set of chords again. Uh, this is a different. And I put the same chords in it, right? Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's on a different, um, citrus. Oh, it's on this one. I did it right. I'm sorry. It's late at night and I'm gone crazy. Here, grab that. There we go. And then just turn the volume of this down. There we go. Beautiful. So what you'll see is that you have this really, really high frequency content, positive amplitude um, signal, which is great for merging signals together. You'll have to do some editing to get rid of those clicks. Tip number two. After you've created your synth, do be careful about which plugins you're going to be using for your effects. Have the oscilloscope, Wave Candy, or if you're in Ableton, uh, God, what's it called in Ableton? Um, I think it's called like Analyzer or something like that. Just be careful because if I run all these through the filter in citrus, for instance, right? I can maintain that positive region. Um, even if I run it through like unison, 
long as I don't blow my eardrums or your eardrums. Right? It keeps it it keeps it up there in the in the positive region. However, if let's say I'm outputting it here and I'm like, ah, oh, I want some saturation on it. And I go to the kilohertz distortion, put it on saturate, maybe put like, you know, three dBs, turn the dynamics down, um, turn the volume down just in case. Um, this happens. It recenters your waveform. It puts it right back at it puts it right back in the middle of your oscilloscope. So <clears throat> when you're doing the sound design for your um impulse response synth, keep an oscilloscope open and watch it as you're adding effects to it. Um to keep from adding a plugin that brings the waveform back to the zero point and creating those negative reflections that you don't want. Uh, tip number three, um, download my rectified waveforms. Uh, this is just the preview of it. I'm going to create another set of these saw stacks um, for you to use uh, in minor chords. <laughs> Um, so that way you have a collection of different rectified samples to work with. So if you look here, you'll see that they're all, they're all positive region, um, rectified waveforms that you can chop up and you can add effects to and play around with to create your own, um, design. These are just sort of to give you a sort of building block. Cause I don't know how many synths are like citrus that give you the ability to put a waveform on the top region. Um, I think. If you wanted to do it in like vital, um, you'd have to, let me go to one here, open one up. If it'll let me, um, oh wow, I've, I have, I've broken FL studio. All righty. So if I wanted to create this in vital, um, let me turn all of these off. Um, what you can do, and I'm sure you can figure this out for citrus, <laughs> citrus serum, um, or whatever. Um, if you have an editor in your synth, um, take, find these points that, um, create the, the wave shape. And instead of going from a wave source, we'll go to a line source. And we can just move that line source up like this. So that way you only have positive, a positive region. And it's being annoying because there is a second, um, there's a second waveform happening in the background for some reason. I have, I have one. I made it somehow. I don't remember how I fucking made this, but I did. Where is it? Uh, rectified. Okay. I have this wave table. I'm just going to give you guys this wave table because I remember it being such a fucking pain in the ass to do because you're constantly fighting this stupid thing in the background. I don't know what that thing is, but, um, there you go. We, you have all of your rectified waveforms. You have a dog shit sign. You have a, a really terrible triangle, a, horrifying saw wave and then a square wave all in the DC positive positive DC re, uh, region. So I will give this to you guys because I can't fucking show you how I made it because I don't remember how I made it. I'm so sorry. Um, that's fine though. I'm for you serum people. Uh, I am going to attempt to figure out how to access the wavetable file and convert that to a wavetable file that Serum can read and give you that as well. So that way you don't have to try to figure out how to do this. You can just take the wavetable and save it as a preset for yourself. Um, all of this that I'm giving you guys, the waveforms, the uh, wavetable is totally free. It's in the link in the description. Go off and make wonderful music with it. Um, but that will do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. <clears throat> and I will see you hopefully soon.
Peace. I have broken FL Studio. Hang on a second. Ah, oh, fuck. It's going to delete the whole thing. Damn it. I really wanted to give you guys that project file, but now it's gone. Fuck. It's whatever. Oh, yeah, this is long and fucked. This is, this is well and fucked. This is bad. Oh, God. Ah, oh, damn it. <sighs> yep, there it goes. You know... Sometimes FL, for the most part, FL has been really nice to me and worked. Um, but lately, it has just absolutely been terrible. Uh, while we wait for that to open, um, let's take a look at what I have on my desktop. Uh, yep, I have a uh, flat cam, Nikon, nice, 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 Sony Vegas 16 because uh, we ball. Oh, we're good. We're up. I do a line source and then it's the only one I bring this up why are you why are you doing this oh I think it's because I don't have the point yeah I don't have the point there we go what are you doing come on give me what I want Let me... this is really fucking annoying I do apologize Is it, why does it create that? Oh, maybe it's because of the this whole face thing in here. I'm so fucking. Confused. 